Hi there, welcome back to Bright Hope. I'm glad you could join us. Uh, the class today is called No Rolling Stones. Uh, I've been here now for just over a year. Um, I celebrated being here um, on the 8th of July. So, um, uh, a year's gone really, really fast and lots of things have happened. It's been really exciting. God has been really faithful. Everything, you know, he's been with us step by step. And, uh, and one day, you know, I will record um, a message about everything that we've done to bring us here and um, and hopefully you know um, we'll be seeing some really amazing things and, and other people will be seeing some amazing things but uh, for me it was a real landmark moment to come to a year and, uh, and turn around and say well you know this year God you are good I mean you've been with us up to now and uh, I know that as we carry on you will continue to be faithful and you will continue to fulfill your word uh, to us and, and, and working in your promises and your purposes in our lives. So to celebrate, uh, we decided to go on a bit of a, a trip and, uh, and we spent a couple of days driving around different places around England. The good thing about England is there is so much to see, a very little island, lots and lots to see. Uh, and we went driving to the Cotswolds and there are some amazing places in, in, in the Cotswolds. Um, there's this one, there were these, uh, sorry, two, two little, little villages, Lower Slaughter, Upper Slaughter, which I thought were, were amazing names. Didn't really want to spend too much time in there, um, you know, uh, kind of either we were going to come across some werewolves or, or some, I don't know, just some, some crazy things happening there. So uh, we, we carried on driving to uh, a place uh, called uh, Broadway. And um, I was I was really looking forward to this. I thought there would be like like major lights and uh, theatre action and things like that. Uh, none of that. Very small, uh, beautiful, beautiful little little uh, Cotswold village. Uh, so we took lots and lots of pictures. And on the way back, there was this massive tower. And uh, and I said, guys, we have to check out the, the tower. They were fed up. They just wanted to come home. They'd had enough. But I said, we're here now. We've got to do it. We may never have another chance. And so we were driving up the hill and then we took this, this small little path to get to this tower. We all went running in the rain towards this tower, had a look at the tower, got some pictures, had a look at the deer that were, were, were right next to the tower. It was an incredible family moment, although I think my girls didn't really you know, take advantage of the joy of, of seeing this National Heritage Site. Um, England has lots of landmarks. This, this broad, Broadway ta uh, tower... Uh, is a landmark covers covers this this uh, um, village looks down upon this village and you can see all around you know and uh, and you can see this tower from all around you can see this tower from from miles and miles away uh, and I was looking up the word landmark and and basically a landmark is an object or a feature of a landscape um, that is easily seen and recognised from a distance uh, especially one that enables someone to establish their location. So they, they, they see, you know, a landmark from, from a way off and they can recognise exactly where they are and they can say, oh, well, that, whether it's geographic or whether it's man-made, you know, they can see it and, and it helps them figure out exactly where they are. Um, very good on, on maps. You can use it, you know, to, to figure out where you are. So uh, it identifies your location. Uh, it can be a building or monument of historical importance. Uh, the boundary of an area or land, uh, an object marking this distance, uh, a fixed marker such as concrete block that indicates a boundary line, uh, an event or discovery marking, marking an important stage or turning point in something, for instance, in history. Uh, for me, you know, having been here for a year, that was a landmark moment. Um, people celebrating 10 years, uh, 15 years of marriage, that's a landmark moment. Uh, a child becoming 18, uh, you know, landmark moment. They they are now an adult. They can uh, now you know watch eighteen certificate movies, and they can actually go and order a drink. Um, and they should carry ID. You know, um, but landmark moments. We 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 all experience landmark moments. Personal landmark landmark moments where we're we're going through life and and, and we hit these milestones, uh, landmark events. You know, and then there are landmarks which. Uh, um, again, the physical aspects of, of places around us. Um, landmarks are, are, are known and recognised the world over. We look at Sydney Opera House, um, we look at, at the White House, we look at Big Ben. Uh, you know, 
anywhere over the world, people will see this and they can identify immediately um, the type of place we're talking about. These types of landscapes are, are very much destroyed in the Hollywood movies. You know, Independence Day, um, they set a trend and, and from that point on, every big movie wants to destroy um, a, a popular landmark. In the Bible, we find landmarks. You know, we find places, um, we find the physical rivers and, and lakes. Uh, we find memorials and altars, uh, temples, and then there are the events, the, the Passover, the crossing of the Red Sea, uh, you know, um, Jesus coming. These, these are all massive landmark moments in, in history. Um, and the Bible also talks about them being boundaries, boundaries for the land, um, designating somebody's plot of land. And there are very clear instructions not to move uh, the landmarks. That's why this class is called No Rolling Stones. Uh, Deuteronomy 19.14 says, Do not move your neighbour's boundary stone set up by your predecessors in the inheritance you receive in the land the Lord your God is giving you to possess. So he says very clearly, no rolling stones. No rolling stones. Don't move the stones. Don't move the stones. Okay? Uh, now if you have your Bible, turn with me. Uh, to Joshua 4, because I want to talk about some stones, some stones that um, are a landmark, some stones that are a historic landmark, but also a geographical landmark. And I was reading this story, the Bible, you know, is amazing that you can come back to it again and again and again, and you see things um, that perhaps, you know, you've read through it 30 times, and you still haven't seen this. And this, this was a case in point for me. Uh, Joshua chapter 4, uh, verse 1 says, And it came to pass, when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for yourselves twelve men from the people, one man from every tribe, and command them, saying, Take for yourselves twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. Uh, basically, the context is, um, the people of Israel come out of Egypt, 40 years in Egypt, Moses has died, Joshua is the, is the new leader, they're looking at him for I instruction, for leadership, uh, and he's looking to God. You know, he's, he's like, I, I, I can't do this on my own, I need, I need God. So um, God is giving, giving him in instructions. Uh, and one of the first things they do is they have to cross over the River Jordan. It's another geographical landscape and it's a, a problem for the people. You've got uh, around a million people um, coming in to possess the Promised Land and the Promised Land is beyond the River Jordan. So, uh, so they're looking at how we're going to cross this thing and God says, you know what, send the priests forward carrying the Ark of the Covenant, this massive box, um, you know, uh, we, we can see it in Indiana Jones. Uh, and uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. The, the Ark, they're carrying the Ark, they put their water, uh, sorry, put their feet in the water, the waters stop, and, and all the people can cross over. And at that point, God says, take stones from the River Jordan and put them on the side, so that in the Promised Land, when anybody comes back to this place, they can see exactly uh, what has happened here. In fact, it goes on to say that this will be a sign for you, for your children, when they ask, uh, what are these stones that you can say? This is the point that God brought us across the River Jordan. We stood, you know, the priest stood in, in, in the river and the water stopped so that we could all cross over. And then we, we came out, we pulled out some stones, put these stones on the side. Uh, just because I knew you were going to ask me that question and, and God knew you were going to ask that question. So that's why the stones are there. So it will, it will be a memorial. It will be a... Uh, a landmark for you. It will be a point of conversation. You'll say, oh wow, what is going on here? And then you can start talking about how good God is and everything that God has done. But then he goes on uh, to say in verse 8, and the children of Israel did so just as Joshua commanded. They took the twelve stones from the midst of the Jordan, uh, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, carried them over to the place where they lodged and laid them down there. Then Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of the Jordan in the place where the feet of the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there to this day. Now this is uh, another memorial that is set up. Uh, Joshua takes 12 stones from the Jordan, puts them on the side, but then at the same time takes 12 stones from the side and puts them in the midst of the River Jordan. And then they get out of there, they leg it, they, they, they make for the side, 
and the water returns and those stones are completely covered. And that's, that's basically uh, the last we hear of those stones. The, the Joshua stones are there for all to see, but then there are other Joshua stones that are hidden under the river. And, uh, and nobody can see those stones. So I was reading this and I thought, wow, I remember hearing about you know, the memorial put there, the landmark that's there on the side for all to see. But what's going on with the stones that are under the river? What's, what's all that about? Um, now, I started investigating and, and basically um, theologians, uh, they say that this is a, a sign of salvation. This is a, a demonstration. What we find in the Old Testament, there are a lot of uh, what we call typology, um, uh, a lot of demonstrations of Christ and his redeeming work, uh, everything that Jesus was going to do, we find it signposted in the Old Testament. Uh, the Passover, that's a, a massive um, massive signpost of what God is, it was going to do when, when Jesus came and died on, on the cross. You know, um, if you watch the Prince of Egypt, then you know you might understand that that's all that is talking about the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus is. You know, the, the sign, he is the fulfillment of that sign. So all through the Old Testament, we find many, many examples. And that, that is a whole class on its own. This is considered uh, one of those. Uh, it's a signpost for salvation. Basically, um, we see that the Bible talks about river um, water or, um, or, or rushing water being a, a type of judgment. I mean, we look at, at Noah's flood and the waters came in and, you know, and everybody died. Um, there are there are psalms that talk about you you've uh, lifted me up and you've protected me from the from the water um, you've set my feet upon the rock um, where the, the waters rise but they can't reach me um, it's it's considered you know um, in a lot of cases that the water comes and just destroys so it, it's considered uh, as a, a sign of judgment and the stones that were taken out um, to, to be placed on the other side well they're not going to be um, going through that judgment, they're saved. You know, Joshua, his name um, is is basically the, the the same name as Jesus. Uh, Jesus is in the Greek, and Joshua is in the Hebrew. It basically means the same thing. Uh, um, Jehovah is salvation, um, and and he took those stones and put them to one side, and he put them in the promised land, which is uh, a sign of our salvation. So they were saved from that wrath, you know, that was coming. And the stones that, that didn't want to cross over, that decided, no, they, they, they would prefer not to, well, they remained on the other side. They, they, they remained within the Jordan. They said, we don't want anything to do with it. And they uh, were completely covered by, by the water. So um, theologians say that's the explanation. And it's, it's another example in the Old Testament of, uh, of what Jesus is going to do and the choice that we have. We can either choose Jesus and, and, and have salvation or we can decide I don't want Jesus, and uh, and the river's gonna you know gonna hit me, um, very much like uh, um, you know these these Hollywood movies that, that show all these destructions of the landmarks. Um, so we have a choice. We can we can be a stone that remains, or we can be a stone that, that's taken out. You know we get to choose. That's that's the 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 very key element of this. Jesus always gives us the choice. He wants to come into our lives and he wants to bring us salvation, but the choice is ultimately yours and mine. We can choose whether we want to or not. It's not a a matter of you will be a rolling stone and taken out of the river and moved to one side if you don't want to be. Um, and if you choose, you know then. If you say, yes, yes, Lord, I, I do want that, then he will take you. And if, if you say, I don't want that, then you will remain. The choice is yours. Nobody else takes that for you. God does not take that for you, but he offers it to you. He says, I will, I will lift you up out of that. So um, that is the traditional way of, of seeing that. But I was looking at it and saying, and thinking about, about it myself, meditating, and, and, uh, and I said, there's, there's, there's something else there. God, God wants to say something else to us. Uh, and the two types of stones, the ones that were outside and the ones that were inside. The stones are outside the Jordan. Well, that's very clear. It's for all to see. Uh, they're going to remain there um, as long as, you know, as long as the stones are remaining there and people don't come and, and start moving them around for, for fun or graffitiing all over them or throwing them left, right and centre. They're there uh, and they're physical stones and people can, can visually see them. You know, they're... Uh, uh, a memorial, an altar, um, something physical for people to see. God did this here. 
and uh, and everybody who passed could see that and, and the reason for them being there is so that people will see and it will be a point of conversation um, it's clear the reason for them to be there is very clear this is what it means God fulfills his promises he brought us across the river Jordan he saved us and he's brought us into the promised land and this is where it where it all began this is the marking of the promised land the the entrance point for us as a people this is where it began so very clear external um, the Bible says we are called to be living stones uh, 1 Peter 2 5 you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ um, so if we're on the other side, you know, those stones that, that were taken out of the river and put there for all to see, um, that could signify us. You know, we are those living stones that people will see. And externally, there will be enough in our life that people will say, oh, wow, that person lives differently. That person has something in their life which, which makes them very distinct. Uh, that would be living uh, as a living stone being used by God as a living stone and 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 hopefully people will come to you and say what is what is it about your life what is different about you and then there were stones inside the Jordan the ones outside very easy to understand the ones inside you know what is going on there what did God want to do why were those stones placed there that the rivers were the river water was going to cover them um, and they would disappear from sight nobody else would see them we we don't know what happened to those stones afterwards? Um, God is the only one who knows what actually happened to those stones, whether those stones are there today or not, um, whether they've been rolling stones or haven't been rolling stones. We don't know. God is the only one who knows. But um, something special about these stones, one, they're hidden. They were just between Joshua the people and God. Nobody else, you know, no other people knew about those stones. No other, other people would see those stones. Even the people in Joshua wouldn't see those stones. But they'd lived the experience and they knew exactly what God had done and God had said. And they wanted an altar, not just physically for everybody else to see, but the stones that were hidden was just basically between them and God. And, and this to me is very, very clear because my relationship with God is only, um, it's, it's really just between me and him. No, nobody else knows exactly what's going on in my life. He's the only one who sees everything or everything that I can hide from everybody else and do this, this massive attempt to cover up my life and shroud my life from, you know, uh, prying eyes. God sees everything. These hidden secret stones, only he can see. This, these promises that he's given to me, this, this uh, covenant that he's made with me, that's between him and me and nobody else. And actually, that is more important. What is hidden with my relationship with God? I mean, it's hidden to everybody else, but, but I can see it. You know, I often say, no matter what happens, if, if I don't experience anything else from God, if I, if I never hear his voice again, if I never see another miracle, if, if, if I never you know, get to experience his presence in, a, in a, a tangible experience again, I will never deny my God because I know what he's done in my life. I know what he means to me and everything he's done I cannot deny what he's done up to now that's the hidden thing nobody else can see those things and even if I talk about those things everyone will be like well that's great for you not for me you know that's very very personal and yes it is the hidden things where God and I made a, a covenant where I gave him my heart and said you take control you know that was the moment that my life completely changed that was a hidden moment nobody else was around to experience that God is faithful to his promises whether we see them or not whether they're it's a memorial stone landmark on the outside or whether there, there are hidden stones on the inside. God is faithful to his promises. And I think what Joshua was doing at that moment was saying, God, these are the stones for everybody to talk about. But this here in the hidden place is a declaration between you and myself, the people and you, that you are faithful to your promises. And these stones will be hidden from everybody's eyes, but you know they're there and we know they're there. And, and that's what counts. That is the most important thing. The hidden, everything that happens on the inside of you is much more important than what happens on the outside. You can see people and they're dressed, you know, completely strange. And, uh, and, and they have a whole bunch of stuff in, in their body and in their life. And, and, you know, we can judge them for that. And it's, it's quite often you look at somebody and, and you're like, okay, God, what do you think of that person? Because it's not what's on the outside which counts. It's what's on the inside that counts. What is hidden is much more important. 
Joshua is saying, this is a declaration of my trust in your promises. And whether other people will follow it or not, I completely trust in you. You will fulfill your promise. Uh, a couple of weeks back, we went to uh, visit my mum in Brighton. And um, we went to St Peter's Church uh, down there in, in, in the centre of Brighton. It's an amazing church, a, a vibrant, wonderful, wonderful place. Um, and there was a, a guy leading worship, a, a guy called Martin Smith, uh, who, you know, uh, <laughs> probably a, a, a really well-known, if you're listening to this, then you've probably heard of him, uh, the lead singer of Delirious. And, uh, and we came in not expecting, you know, to be blessed. I mean, we're always blessed when we go to the church, but uh, this was just a, a double blessing. Um, he started leading worship and just the, the, the presence of God was, was there. And it just brought back, it, it, it kind of brought flashbacks to me of my my first year when I started walking with, with Jesus. Um, how I just, you know, every opportunity I got, I went to the uh, the local Christian bookshop and I started buying, you know, Christian CDs to listen to. The first CDs I got, you know, I really hated them. Uh, actually, some of them were given to me and I, and I was like, that is just ridiculous. And what are they singing about? It's rubbish. But um, I was seeking God and I wanted more of God and I just started to put them on and listen to them again and again and again and again. And I fell in love with these really stupid uh, songs and, and all these people, all these artists. Um, and I remember um, during this period um, when I started really falling in love with, with, with some of this, this Christian music, um, somebody told me about Delirious and uh, I went running to, to the shop and I, and I picked up um, the cutting edge CDs. Um, the cutting edge CDs were their, their first music, um, their first songs, and, and I just put them on and I just listened to them again and again and again and again and again, and it was in my car and it was in my bedroom and it was on my, uh, you know, my, my, my discman, and uh, everywhere I went I was listening to them. And it brought back all that, the, the, the flashbacks of my first love, and, and, and uh, to me it, it was a real landmark moment. I mean, God was, was reminding me and saying, you know, I've made a promise to you, son. And I will fulfill my promise to you. You know, you know how, how, how we talked about what your life would be and what you would do. Uh, now we're, we're living it. And, uh, you know, for, for me just to, to, to come into that once more and be reminded of that once more through that incredible worship experience. Uh, it was just God saying, you know, I fulfill my promises to you. And, and he does. He is so faithful. Um, and and there, there are landmarks. But... Um, there are stones on the outside for everybody to see and, and hopefully they will, you know, people will see our lives and they will say, Jesus is in this guy or Jesus is in this woman. You know, they're, they're, there's something about them that, that attracts me and I want to know, you know, why are they always so happy? Why are they singing? Why? I mean, what, what is their, their, you know, their drug of choice? I mean, what, what is it that they've got? Uh, and we can share with them and they will be the stones on the outside. But even more important than that, and this is where no rolling stones really, really comes into place. Um, the memorial that, that has been set up in my heart, the, the altar that, I, that I've just said, Lord, I give you my life. You know, I want to give it to you as a living sacrifice. That's where the stones are originally placed. When you say, Jesus, I, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Uh, and so I, I would just encourage you, you know, uh, look at the, this scripture in Joshua 4, read over it. Um, you know, God can speak to you and, and, and say something completely different to that. But, um, but the hidden stones are much more important. What, what nobody else sees, your relationship with him, that's much more important. Thank you ever so much for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please look at our videos. Uh, Annie's there sharing and uh, we've got a few more on, on, on YouTube and on our Facebook page. Uh, and we're planning on starting meetings uh, very, very shortly here in the, the Reading, in the early uh, area. And, uh, and if, you're, if you listen to this and you say, well, I'd like to uh, be part of something new, I'd, I'd like to be part of something exciting, um, then uh, contact us, let us know, because it's, it's going to be exciting to see everything that God does in fulfilling his promises and his purposes in our lives. Thank you and God bless.